Hey guys, what's up? It's Anish here today with an amazing card trick to show all of you guys. This is a prediction based card trick that requires no setup at all. A huge shout out to Card Shuffler 99 for teaching me this trick. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so I'm going to start off by opening this deck and I'm going to go through the cards and remove the two jokers because they're not going to be required for this card trick. Place them off to the side. I'm going to proceed to give this deck of cards to the spectator and ask them to shuffle it like so. At the moment I don't have a spectator, so it's just up to me to shuffle the cards. And then I turn the packet around and show it to the spectator, telling them that, as you can see, all the cards are mixed up. You did the shuffling, there's no way I could control this. So you, you go through the cards and you're like, now I'm going to make a secret prediction. One which you can't see, but one which is going to come in handy later. So I'm going to go through the cards and... Uh, okay, so I think this would be a good prediction. So I take a prediction and keep it here. And to ensure that I don't touch it until the end of the trick, I'm going to keep it under that box. So anytime that box moves, you could accuse me of touching the card, I guess. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to take this deck, I'm going to hand it over to the spectator, and I'm going to ask them to start dealing cards down one by one. So, I'm going to start doing that. I can, I'm going to tell them that you could deal from anywhere you want. You could deal one card from the middle or one card from the bottom. And they're going to continue to deal cards, so these are their hands, the ones that are dealing the cards. And they keep dealing cards from random positions in the deck. And I tell them, deal around 15, 15 cards, that should be good. So they do that, and we can place this deck off into the side. Now I'm just going to arrange the packet. I'm going to ask the spectator again to take these cards and one by one split it up into two piles. So they're going to start doing that, just one by one splitting it into two different piles. And during this time, you're just waiting, waiting for them to finish. Okay, so they finish that, and we have two separate piles. I'm going to ask the spectator to put their hand over both piles and I'll lift any hand of their choice. Let's suppose they lift this hand. So we're going to keep this card as the number card. So we're going to take the number from this card and we're going to take the sign from this card. Okay, that's, that's a possible way which this can work. So with a snap of my finger, I want the spectator to turn over these cards. So the spectator turns over this card spectator turns over this card. So the number here is the queen, and the sign here is the spade. I'm going to take my hands off the table, and I'm going to say, at the beginning of the trick, I made one prediction that's under this box of cards that I didn't touch ever after I kept it there. I want the spectator to remove the box and turn that card around. Spectator proceeds to do so, removing the box and turning the card around, and that is, well in fact, the Queen of Spades. Ta-da! Okay guys, so that was the trick, moving on straight into the tutorial. So this is a very simple trick, it doesn't require any slights, and those are personally the kind of tricks that I love, the ones where, where you're sure that this trick will work, you have a high percentage at this trick working, and since the spectator does it as well, that makes it even better. The spectator feels like, oh, I did this trick, and somehow it worked out. Everything matches up evenly at the end. This is a really powerful trick. I love doing this trick, and let's get straight into the tutorial. So to start off, we ask the spectator to shuffle the cards. Great, that's randomly shuffled, and they give the deck back to you. You turn over and you show them that all the cards are different. But in reality, whenever you show the spectator that the cards are different, you're not actually showing them to show them. You're showing them because you want something out of that, okay? And in this case, what you want is to memorize the top two cards, the Seven of Diamonds and the Eight of Clubs. And so that's how it goes. You're like, okay, the shuffle deck of cards. And as you can see, all these cards are mixed up. They're not in any specific order or any pattern, right? They're just very different cards. And I just look at the top two and I see that they're the seven and the clubs. So all you want is the number of the first card 
and the sign of the second card, because these are the ones that are going to end up on the top face at the end of the trick. So seven of clubs, you have that ready. So you just scroll through the cards and square them all up again. Now you're going to say, okay, I'm going to go through this deck of cards and I'm going to make a secret prediction. And all that time, you're actually searching for the seven of clubs. So the seven and the clubs, right? You're searching for the seven of clubs. You get the seven of clubs and you say, okay, this is my secret prediction. And I'm not going to touch this. And to ensure that I don't touch this card until the end of the trick, I'm going to keep it underneath the box. So that adds, that adds a bit of um, confidence in the spectator, knowing that I have to go underneath the box to actually change that card. Now you proceed to say, okay, I want you to start dealing cards down one by one. So they're going to start dealing cards and wait for the first two cards to be dealt. This is very important. Wait so that the first two cards are dealt completely. And after that, you could go with the line, okay, now you could deal cards from anywhere. Or you, after they deal two cards, you could be like, okay, deal cards from anywhere in the deck. You could deal one from the middle, one from the bottom. And they start doing that. And then after like seven or eight cards, you could be like, deal around 15 cards that should be enough and so they're dealing wherever they want from it's completely their choice okay and they've dealt the cards meaning we now have those two cards the seven of diamonds and the eight of clubs at the bottom of the deck so from here on uh, you just give the motion just one by one dealing cards into two separate packets one at a time so and they start doing so uh, sometimes I've seen people uh, start to deal cards from the middle because because from the previous part of the trick they were allowed to deal from the middle of the deck and hence they thought they could deal from the middle of the packet as well. So try to try to give them confirmation that they can only deal from the top of the deck. Tell them you have to deal one by one from the top and that's going to ensure that they deal it one by one. So they're going to start dealing it like this and just into two separate piles. And one thing you should take note of here is which, which packet ends it. So the last card went on this packet, meaning that's our number card. And our second to last card went on this packet, meaning that's our sign card. So you have to keep track of that. Wherever the last card goes, that's your number. Okay, so now we have Magician's Force. So what this is, is basically you're gonna ask the spectator to place their, hand over, place their hands over both packets. You're gonna ask them to raise one of their hands. So no matter what hand they raise, it's certain that this is the number card and this is the sign card. So if they raise this hand, you're gonna say great. So let's open this pile and take this as the number. I'm gonna take that as a sign. Okay. On the other hand, if they raise this, I'm like, okay, your hand's on this. So we're gonna keep this as the number card and this as the sign. So whatever they do, it's technically it's still the same thing. So we're going to say number, sign, and since we already know what these two cards is, these were the first two cards in that deck, which are now back on top. You turn it around, you see the number, you turn around, the spectator does all this, and they see the sign. And now, they're, now all you say, you just make it dramatic, you're like, okay, I haven't touched that box from the start of the trick, once I made my prediction. I want you to remove the box and turn the card around. They do it themselves, and to their surprise, it's the seven of clubs. The seven of clubs magically appeared. Uh, when in reality, all of this is just a simple force. So that's the end of the trick. I really hope all of you guys like that. This is one of my favorites. I use it on literally everybody I meet <laughs> where I have a deck of cards. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and bye bye.